Well, hello, dear friends. It is your favorite space uncle, I know. And it's time once more for another story from one of our favorite people, Reddit user SquibblyD. Again, I still think your name is fantastic. This is Warbeard Part 4. Oh, yes. This one's all about Monopoly, apparently. I don't even... Even if I didn't know the entire backstory of Warbeard, I already know that we're in for some shit because Monopoly is... Just a hell of a game, isn't it? It makes everybody hate everybody, no matter what. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Hi, guys. Hello, Red X. Hey, Red X. Figure it's time to do a little bit... Hold on, hold on, hold on. No hi for me? I'm not reading this story. Nope. fucking with you. Of course I'm reading this story. I figure it's time to do a bit more Warbeard anthology for you all. This time we're going to talk about my dad's quote-unquote favorite game, Monopoly. Oh boy. I must have been eight or nine at the time. My little brother Bubs and I would play Monopoly regularly together. We never played Monopoly with Warbeard before, as he insisted that it was a child's game. But my brother and I, boy, we went hard. While we only played once a week, the game would drag on for hours on end, and sometimes even be resumed the following week, right where we left off. Yeah, Monopoly is kind of like that. We were ruthless, practiced businessmen waging their war of finance against each other. Well, Warbeard must have been growing bored of his usual fare. Perhaps the games he was playing on the computer at the time were too easy for him. Probably because he played them on easy. <laughs> Rather than try to sucker me and my little brother into a game of magic, his current thing, he decided instead that he would meet my brother and I halfway to rope us into his favorite board game. Now the ironic thing is that Warbeard hated Monopoly. His excuse? There's never any cooperation. Yeah, that's kind of the point. This is amusing because I've played cooperative games with him throughout the years. And his definition of cooperation is wait till he has the upper hand and then intentionally sacrifice the rest of the team so he can pretend he shines like a golden god. Classy. Anyhow, today he decided that this uncooperative hang-up of his wasn't a hang-up any longer. And he approached my brother and myself. Like clockwork, you can imagine where this encounter went. So you guys think you're pretty good at Monopoly, huh? The inflection on this question has been seared into my brain from hearing it so many times over... Just about every game I ever played. Uh, we're okay. I mean, we do play a lot. Yeah, it's about 50-50 whoever wins. So you wanna play with me? Internally, I'm screaming no at the top of my lungs. Also understandable. I should have seen that follow-up coming a mile away. And ever since that day, I expected it every time he asked us if we thought we were good at something. My instinctual flight response, however, left me gobsmacked, and my brother answered in my stead with an enthusiastic and resounding yes. Warbeard smiled his usual smug, toothy grin at us and led us to the table. He brought out the game and began to set it up for play. For a moment, I considered ducking out. A million excuses, half of them entirely ridiculous for a nine-year-old, flooded my head. I pooped myself, left the oven on at home, needed to see a man about a horse. I didn't foster any. I knew if I ducked out now, I'd have to deal with his endless and vicious mockery because, well, apparently not playing games with your abusive father makes you the family coward. Wow, what an asshole. I didn't feel like putting up with the endless down-talking today, however, so I fought back the malaise and took a seat at the table. I watched Warbeard as he set up the game. He was giddy. Too giddy. I've never seen a grown man possessed with such glee before, and I'm sure that glee was far from the innocent glee of a child. It was the sinister glee of a practiced sadist. Ah boy, here we go. With the board set, everyone went to grab their game pieces. To nobody's surprise, Warbeard took the battleship probably believing somewhere in the back of his mind that choosing it proved the virtuous nature of his masculinity to his children. Ew. But Bubs, he opted to take the hat. A good choice. And when I reached into the box, I grabbed my favorite, the thimble. The game hadn't even begun, and already play was being interrupted by the scoffing incredulity of my petulant father. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're grabbing the thimble? It's not a bit girly, don't you think? Motherfucker, it's a board game. Calm down. I don't know. I just think it looks funny. It's like the little helmet for your finger or something. I put it on the end of my pointer finger and smiled as I showed him. He just snorted and rolled his eyes. Classy as ever. 
Underneath his breath, I thought I heard him mumble, Of course, coward picks a woman's piece. Oh, he's one of those. He let out an exasperated sigh and spoke. Fine, you want to play with that, I won't stop you, but I'll promise I'm going to take this game or you seriously. Oh, for fuck's sake. That was a rather mean thing to say to a nine-year-old. Yeah, just to remind you all, we're talking to a literal child. Fuck this guy. My smile rapidly faded from my face, and slowly, dejectedly, I put the thimble in the pile of game pieces before settling on one that would be more suited to my father's taste. I reached back in the bin, pull out at random, my cheeks burning with humiliation. When I withdrew my hand, I pulled out the car and despondently set it on the board. Well, that's a good piece. About time to pick a real one. See, this could be a lot of fun. I'll show you how to play Monopoly like men. Play Monopoly like men. There's a phrase I never thought I'd actually hear a human being say. With setup concluded, my dad took a seat to the left of my brother and then declared that the youngest goes first and then we'll go clockwise. He had strategically chosen his location and then declared the rules so as to put me last in turn order. Typical. Either way, however, I was fine with it and actually preferred moving after everyone else. The game began. Bub rolled the dice, moving a few spaces down the board, getting a property. Next up was Warbeard. He rolled the dice, landed on income tax. I just want to leave that space there so we can all just savor that for a moment. I stifled back a giggle, and he moaned, oh, Of course, it's fucking income tax. I fired off a couple of excuses. The dice hated him. Luck wasn't on his side. I was jinxing him. Whatever. Compared to his other outbursts, and even the smallest detriments, however, this was surprisingly mild, and he took it with grace. So anyway, game goes on. We're around the board a few times. Nobody's actually winning at this point of the game. We're mostly all just breaking even. It's been 30 minutes now. Warbeard is surprised that he hasn't absolutely ground us into the dust yet. And he's even getting a little flustered at the fact that he's still playing the game. But what he has failed to remember is that Bubs and I could take an entire day to finish one match. Calculated risks, deals, occasional break, but seriously, we only played once a week because of how long the matches were. He began to yell at us every turn to hurry up when we were rolling and moving our pieces, and was always, always annoyed that his small children actually had to count the number of spaces they had to move. Like, come on, man. We're kids. We need to count the spaces. Yeah! They're fucking kids, you douchebag! Are you all familiar with the saying, nobody lands on boardwalk until somebody owns boardwalk? It was true when my brother and I played. And it was generally holding true for this game as well. Until fortune would have it that Warbeard got the card that sent him straight there. He hooped and hollered and grinned and jeered like he just won the whole game. He started making remarks about how the game was now on borrowed time and that our destruction was at hand. Classy. Because, you know, just owning Boardwalk means the game is over. That's the win condition of Monopoly, right? Bubs and I looked at each other. We knew he had a good bunch more of the board than we did, and now he had the primo property to boot. He certainly did have the upper hand. With this upper hand secured, Warbeard saw fit to draw out the game. Probably because now that he was winning, he wanted to rub our faces in it as much as possible. We went around the board some more. Twice, Warbeard technically actually won. Bubs and I should have been allowed to declare bankruptcy. This was not good enough for Warbeard, however, because now that he was the lord of the board, the show must go on. We weren't allowed to accept our losses and move on with our lives. No, we had to sit there while he crowed and postured like he was a god. Oh, what's the matter? I thought you two said you were good. You both really need to know the difference between smack talk and reality. Coming from this guy, this is fascinating. Bubs had stopped having fun about an hour ago and was on the verge of tears. I was getting mad because nobody makes my little brother cry. I didn't even care about winning anymore. I just wanted Warbeard to lose. So I was determined to beat him. So, we playing this game friendly or cutthroat? If you were to play cutthroat before, you don't know how to play Monopoly, do you? Thanks for the permission, father. Bubs, give me the other gray and I'll give you the two yellow you need. Warbeard stopped smiling and glared at us. He could sense my scheme. Are you sure? Yeah. We exchanged the properties and I could feel Warbeard's stare drilling through my head. Incredulously, he interrupted our dealings. The hell was that? You just gave him a clear advantage. I know. Warbeard shrugged. I guess he reasoned to himself that I was intentionally throwing the game. A bad deal with my brother. I mortgaged off some properties, got a thousand bucks to my name, then turned to my dad and offered the money for his railroad. He smiled, thinking it was another stupid deal, telling him that I was intentionally throwing the game. He was right, for that much, at least. I got the railroad from him, turned to my brother. Give me a thousand bucks and I'll give you both of the railroads, and you can have all four. Wait, what? You can't do that. Why not? 
Well, because it's ganging up on me. That's cheating. No, it isn't. You and Bubs ganged up on me earlier in the game to try and take me out. Besides, you already said that you're gonna win. <laughs> Fire burned in his eyes as he looked into mine. I could see his fragile psyche breaking from the mild sausage I had delivered. I'm surprised he didn't flip the table and pile drive me into the floor, but somehow he managed to hold his tongue and let the game continue. After that small exchange, Warbeard's board-owning entropy seemed to affect us less as my brother and I started to bleed him out. I bought us time. After the next particularly bad lap around the board, Bubs was practically spent and almost 100% bankrupt, and Warbeard was beginning to atrophy rather hard as well. He was playing the time game, hoping that he could stall long enough before he got taken to the cleaners as well and come out on top of it all. Things were looking grim, when suddenly, a miracle happened. Bubs went to jail! And I landed on free parking. We play with the house rule that whoever gets free parking gets all the money a player has to pay that doesn't go to another player. Taxes, fees, all that noise. Oh, I know this rule. It's anytime you have to pay, like, income tax or any of the chance card fees or whatever, it goes into free parking. And if you land on free parking, you get all that money. It, it could be a lot, depending on, like, how much you actually play throughout the entire game. The balance of power had undergone a massive tectonic shift beneath our feet. I was flush with cash, Bubs was sitting somewhere where he wouldn't get cleaned out, and Warbeard had to keep moving across the board. The first thing I did was pay off my properties and get up hotels and houses. <laughs> Warbeard didn't seem too concerned, I was, after all, going to pass through the valley of death that he owned. There was no way I was coming out of it unscathed. I listened to Warbeard tell me about how basically all I had done is invest in my own demise, and thanked me heartily for purchasing a bunch of new properties for him. Sure enough, it eventually happened. I landed on a property of his, fell $100 short of my debt. He laughed in my face and told me it's time to mortgage to sell a house. I, however, had other plans. We had a second house rule. There is no giving things away. An exchange must be made. How much of an exchange? Well, whatever the parties agree on. I needed to shore up my debt with Warbeard, so I turned to my brother. Brubs, you want some uh, property and some cash? Yeah? I held all my properties and money to Bubs. Give me ten bucks and the trade's fine. You bet he took it. Warbeard was seething. He was absolutely livid, and I turned to him smiling sheepishly and held out my ten dollars. This is all I have, if it doesn't cover the debt, then I'd like to declare bankruptcy, please. He took the fake ten dollar bill from my hand. Now, Bubs wasn't dumb. He knew that he needed to stay in jail for another turn or two. Not only that, he used a lot of the money that he had just got to unmortgage the properties he held and set up houses and hotels. Things were looking very good for Bubs. By comparison to our father, who quietly seethed in the corner of the table. I unapologetically locked eyes with him and stared back, deadpan and unshaken. Bubs eventually got out of jail. Warbeard was about to go through a massive stretch of hotel hell. He started hitting property after property that Bubs owned, and at first it was a nice back and forth trade off. But remember how I said Warbeard took the first time landing on income tax well? Well, that run of bad luck was coming his way, and it wouldn't be taken the same. First, he got the card that screwed you out of houses and hotels. Oh, I know which one that is. Then he got luxury tax, and then he got income tax. His cash hand was wiped. He started to yell about being cheated and called us a pair of spiteful little goblins. Then the hotel hell began once more in earnest, eating large chunks of Warbeard's capital. It got to the point where Warbeard was trading properties to Bubs to pay off debts instead of mortgaging them. Warbeard tried sticking it out because, You never know something could happen, he said as he glared through partially misty eyes at his boardwalk slash park place hotels that he was desperately holding on to. But despite his feigned optimism, nothing could hide the sour mood the poor sport exuded. Eventually, Bubs took him out. Warbeard was extremely pissed, having felt cheated. You threw the game, that's cheating! I didn't throw the game. Bubs and I both knew you were going to win. I was just trying to even the game. Well, you should have sold the houses or hotels to pay me. Why? Even if I did something, you were going to continue bleeding us out, as well as us hurting each other. Because that's part of the fun. He glared at me, daring me to contradict him. I did have fun, playing Kingmaker. I had picked up the concept of Kingmaker playing games with my grandparents. 
They had been married for so many years, and during games, they played as a pair. They were always, always on the same team, even if the game had no teams. They would cooperate to always outmuscle or outmaneuver whatever opponents there were and take them down so at least one of them could win. I picked up on this and put it into practice. You just admitted you cheated! You little redacted, incoherent, and vicious rambling. I refused to concede that I cheated in any way, and things quickly escalated into a more violent encounter, something which we'll gloss over and fade to black on. Still, I took that one with a smile on the inside because nobody makes my little brother cry over a fucking game. After that encounter, every time Warbeard wanted to play Monopoly, he had the whole family play. Oh boy, because he was always suspicious that I go out of my way to play Kingmaker again, and he believed that he had better leverage with greater numbers. Spoiler, I definitely kept playing Kingmaker. And that is the first time I ever played Monopoly with my dad. See you in another installment of the Warbeard Anthology soon. First off, remind me never to get on your bad side. <laughs> that was fucking brilliant. Holy shit, that was beautiful. Just every, every moment this motherfucker was convinced that everybody would be exactly like him and looking out for themselves. Meanwhile, you just broke everything that he wanted. He was intentionally trying to focus in on the one that he thought would be the biggest threat. And in a way, I suppose you were. Just not in the way that he saw it coming, was it? That is fucking beautiful. I I am honestly just... I'm so proud. I'm so proud. That is fucking amazing. Thank you for sharing this story with us. Holy shit. I, I needed this. I needed a big smile. This is... God damn, that's beautiful. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. I have a Ko-Fi and a merch store. They help keep the lights on in here. If you can't, that's okay. I understand how things are right now. Also, I have a podcast. It's on Spotify. If you want to get early access to it, you go there. There's also audio-only versions of the stories I read, so it's kind of a thing. Eventually, the podcast will be released on YouTube, but it usually is a week after the premiere date. So if you'd like to get early access, you have to subscribe to my podcast thingy on Anchor and Spotify. The links to all that stuff's in the description. We're going to have a lot of fun guests on there. It should be pretty good. If you want to send me your own story, r slash moonhorse stories, you should totally check it out. It's my subreddit. Personally, I think it's the best subreddit, but, you know, I'm biased. Every Saturday... Sunday and Friday even, there are streams, game streams, as well as just internet nonsense. You can come hang out with us. We do a lot of weird, fun things. And uh, yeah, I have a Discord. You want to come to our Discord and hang out with people? You should come to our Discord and hang out with people. The links to all these things and many, many more are in the description of this and every video. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.